Go volunteer to help your community. The police are overstrapped. And then we see the mayor of Birmingham, Alabama, the mayor of Schenectady, New York, scores of other towns and cities announcing, oh, we've got a police shortage. They've only tripled the police the last few years. Now the cities on the unfunded mandates, the feds only pay for about 10% of it, can't pay for it. And so they go, oh, we'll just lay off cops and bring the army in. That's in the news. And then I get emails and see comments on InfoWars from people going, I'm in the Army. Yeah, we go out and help the community at checkpoints. Yeah, we're going out and helping look for drunk drivers. What, are you for drunk drivers, Alex? You're being acclimated, sir. They do that so that it sounds reasonable. Oh, I'm just helping at a checkpoint stop drunk drivers. And I told you two years ago when they started announcing this, when Northcom announced it, I, I said that we would then have these arguments of them going, well, we're stopping drunks. Well, the Army's doing Starflight, Medevac. We're, the local town doesn't have enough helicopters. So when a child's stuck in a car, we come with the jaws of life and get them out. Do you like being played like a fool? Do you like buying propaganda hook, line, and sinker? Our military doesn't belong to us anymore. Our country's been seized criminally in a corporate hostile takeover by offshore banks. But here's Judge Napolitano telling you like it is. Everywhere they use different pretexts, drunk driving, the flu, uh, dangerous toys for children and products being sold at flea markets and garage sales. And, oh, the Amish can't sell eggs on the street corner because the eggs might be poisonous. And they can't sell cheese and they can't sell watermelons. And we've got to, they won't vaccinate their kids. So the CPS have to take hundreds of their kids a month that we know of in Illinois and Ohio. And we just, the government's just doing all this, and we have to take your blood at checkpoints without warrants to stop drunk drivers. Well, why didn't we do it before? Because there's a Fourth Amendment. This is total takeover. You are the target. Living in your $300,000 house, driving your $25,000 Tahoe with a swimming pool in the backyard. You're going to be made a slave. The only jobs in the economy are going to be surveillance, checkpoints, prisons, camera operators, and working in the factories that make them. They're converting the whole economy. They write white papers on it. They brag. A handful of global corporations are going to re-engineer the economy. Under the executive order signed by Bush, expanded by Obama, it allows all of this. It's totally criminal. They had executive orders about forced sterilizing Americans under eugenics. They had laws that blacks weren't human. It's all a fraud. Does a black man chained up as a slave pulling a plow have a right to say, I'm a human being, I'm not a slave, and fight back? Yes, he does, even if the law says he doesn't have a right. Now, this is probably all just a big martial law drill. They're going to do forced inoculations. They're making nurses and others do it. They're going to try to set the precedent, and then a year or two later, it'll be a bigger operation and bigger and bigger. It's all a process because they know it's very hard to beat incrementalism. Jim is a vet in Illinois, Dan in mass security officer, Juan in New York, healthcare worker, Lori in Texas just saw Homeland Security buses. Yeah, we see Homeland Security armored vehicles here in Austin now, white ones, little armored trucks, uh, big Homeland Security buses. They took over the old Highland Mall that shut down. I tell the idiot public this, and they email me laughing at me, even though it's right down there in Highland Mall. It's just all very funny to you, isn't it? It's all very funny. And Obama's saying, you don't have to take the shots. But then meanwhile, they're forcing everybody and getting ready for it. Let's uh, talk to Jim. Jim, go ahead. Alex, I saw that uh, piece we are changed did on the Ohio National Guard, and I want to suggest that maybe they get the uh, the picture of Marianne Vecchio kneeling over the dead body of Jeffrey Miller, taken May 4, 1970, when the uh, Ohio National Guard fired on uh, peaceful students at uh, Kent State, you know, so they could be reminded, you know, of what happens when we have... But see, the law. feds That's learned... Happened. They're going to stage their own Kent states where they're going to have their own people shoot police who won't even know. They'll disappear into the crowd. They've been caught doing this all over the world. And then they're going to mow everybody down and just start slaughtering everybody with pleasure. No, of course. Agent provocateurs, yes. But uh, now you keep saying that uh, the answer 1984, 1776. And I'd, I'd like to elaborate a little bit on that if I could. Sure. Um, if I could read something here. Um, though governments can originally have no other rights than that before mentioned, nor polity be founded on anything but the consent of the people, yet such have been the disorders and ambitions that filled the world with, that in the no noise of war, which makes so great a part of the history of mankind, this consent is little taken notice of, and therefore many have mistaken the force of arms for the consent of the people, and reckon conquest as one of the originals of government. 
The conquest is as far from setting up any government as demolishing a house is from building a new one in its place. Indeed, it often makes way for a new frame of commonwealth by destroying the former, but without the consent of the people can never erect a new one. That the aggressor who puts himself into a state of war with another and unjustly evades another man's right can by such an unjust war never come to have right over the conquered will be easily be agreed by all men who will not think that robbers and pirates have a right of empire over whomsoever they have force enough to master, or that men are bound by promises which unlawful forces extort for them. Should a robber break into my house and with a dagger at my throat make me seal deed to convey my estate to him, would this give him any title? Just such a title by his sword has an unjust conqueror who forces me into his submission. The injury and the crime is equal, whether committed by the wearer of a crown or of a, some petty villain. The title of the offender and the number of his followers makes no difference in the offense unless it be aggravated. The only difference is great robbers punish little ones. Is that Thomas He's Jefferson general. or Benjamin Franklin? That's John Locke. John Locke. What a John Locke. Uh, email me that. I want to post that. I've read that before. I'd forgotten who'd written it. Stay there. We'll come back to you, then get to Dan, Juan, Lori, and others. Stay with us. Infowars.com.